Are you a new nanny? Or do you want to maybe start nannying? Or maybe you've been a babysitter and now you're transitioning into being a nanny. If so, you may be wondering, how can I be a good nanny? That's exactly what we're gonna be talking about in today's video. We're gonna talk about seven basic skills you need to know to be a good nanny. Hey everyone, I'm Rainy from Oh So Simply, and if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel down below. <laughs> um, and if you're new here, welcome. So today we're gonna to be talking about the seven basic skills you need to know to be a good nanny. I will start by saying that I do genuinely believe, as Gusto from Ratatouille would say, anyone can cook, I believe anyone can nanny. However, being a good nanny is a little bit different. It takes a little more effort, obviously. <laughs> Not everyone can be good or great. So most nannies in their job applications or if there's families that are looking for nannies, they'll put qualities, a list of qualities that they want in their nanny, or they'll just say, good with kids. Uh, that's real vague. <laughs> yes, as a nanny, you should be good with kids. You should be loving. You should have time management skills. You should be creative. Most people want an outdoorsy nanny or a creative artsy nanny um, or an organized nanny, um, someone that can help them structure their lives and their family unit better. Those are all qualities that you will see thrown around on job descriptions or applications a lot in the nanny industry. And yes, those qualities are necessary, but there are seven basic skills that you need as a nanny to be a good nanny. Let's talk about those. First of all, very obvious, diaper changing. Yes, you should know how to change a diaper. Linked down below is how to change a diaper, step-by-step -step instructions. Please, if you do not know how to change a diaper, even if you think that you're only ever gonna be working with older kids, you never know when the family gets pregnant. I have now worked with three families that have gotten pregnant while I was there, and their kid was already potty trained when I arrived. So then I was starting with diapers from scratch. Know how to change a diaper, but also, that's basic nanny. Good nanny, next level, is to know if the kid is in the right diaper size, know how to treat diaper rash and how to prevent diaper rash, and having that information readily available, like knowing that there's a diaper sample pack. If you'd never heard of that before, that's totally fine because I had never heard about that before. I've been a nanny for nine years and I heard about this like two years ago. So basically what it is, is it's a sample box full of different branded diapers that a company will ship to your house so that you can try all of the different diaper brands and figure out which diaper fits your baby's little bum the best. So having that kind of information on hand makes you a valuable asset. Really overall throughout this video, you will see the trend that these basic skills make for a okay or basic nanny, but having the knowledge and the recommendations kind of put you above that to a good or great nanny. So those are linked down below. Um, the blog article connected to this video will be linked down below because it will have all of the links of the products and things that I'm gonna be talking about <laughs> in this video. Number two, make baby food. Yes, every nanny will probably throw some dino nuggets into the oven or throw on a pot of mac and cheese. Take it to the next level. Come on, level up, level up. Make baby food. Every family that I've ever worked for, if they have a baby that is weaning or soon going to be weaning, I offer to make baby food. It takes me one day to make months of baby food. It is so easy to do because most baby food in order to make it just requires you to chop, steam, boil, or bake, and then blend. Pretty simple process there. Um, doesn't require a lot of know-how in the kitchen. So. I recommend making baby food and offering that as a service. It will take you above the basic nanny that does meal prep. Also, I always recommend another way to kind of level up and be a good nanny is to offer to do these things for the family when you have free time. Especially if you're nannying for one baby, a new baby, then you will have a lot of free time on your hands because babies nap a lot and so you can throw in some extra services that will eventually go away as the baby gets older and you can say that right up front but for the time being like why not if you're wondering exactly how to make baby food i will link that article down below i talk about um which foods are my favorite i talk about all of the storage hacks that i have 
so that they are in portion sizes and just like more specifics about baby food and how to introduce baby food and the different stages or levels of baby food that you could be making all of that in the article link down below also it may not be something that you want to offer as a service like a regular service you could always just make a small batch if you know that they're going on vacation or a little camping trip you can just make a small batch of baby food because making baby food honestly also saves the family time and money but then their baby is eating healthier because it's fresher food and then you can tailor your cooking to the baby's learning and taste buds skill number three how to put kids to bed bedtime routines and the bedtime process is always kind of a nightmare even if you've never been a nanny before you know the horror stories but bedtime routine actually starts when the kids first wake up in the morning yes there are three words that you need to know to make your bedtime routines run so smooth patience routine choices choices are what start first thing in the morning when you give your kid a ton of choices throughout the day they feel like they have autonomy they do have autonomy if you're allowing them to make decisions based on dignified choices. So giving kids lots of choices throughout the day helps them feel like they've had control all day and they're less likely to put up a fight when that control is taken away for things like bedtime, which isn't really negotiable. And I go into autonomy and giving kids choices, the importance of doing so to make struggles happen less frequently that's what we all want. Um, in the interview that I did with Martha from the Chronicles of Nania, that was one of my favorite talks we've ever had and one of my favorite videos that I've ever done here on YouTube because we talk a lot about choices and autonomy and kids and how they can develop that and how we can as nannies help them with that and also in there we give a plethora of examples of dignified choices that we can give to kids and a big chunk of those toward the end were actually about bedtime. So go ahead and check out that video. I will leave it linked up here and I will leave the podcast version of it linked down below as well if you just want to listen to it on the road. So giving your kid choices throughout the day helps them feel in control and then when that control is taken away at times like bedtime when the choice isn't really there of whether or not we go to bed, um, you can still give them choices around bedtime and it will make the process of bedtime go a lot smoother. Trust me. Also, one of the things pro tip that I do with my kids for bedtime is to have them write or draw a checklist. I help them obviously, um, write or draw a checklist of things that they need to do before bedtime and then Every night we do that same checklist and they can actually check it off or put a sticker in the box or whatever your method is going to be so that they can see how close bedtime is getting, how few things there are left to do before actually going to sleep. That way, going to sleep doesn't surprise them. So they know it's coming, they're prepared, they're ready, and they're usually okay with it. Then at that point, all you have to do is be consistent. Consistency with anything involving kids is vital because they will figure out that it is a habit and a regular occurrence and it will no longer be a surprise and it will get easier and easier every time you do it. So even if your routine at first is a little shaky, just keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. Things will start to flow really well. Skill number four, clean and sanitize toys. How to do it. So cleaning and sanitizing toys is very important for a number of reasons, but the number one reason obviously is baby's health. Babies, they don't know what a germ is, and so they literally grab anything they can, and for sensory purposes and learning, they stick it in their mouths, and then they walk with those sticky little fingers on the ground as they crawl, and then they stick that in their mouth, and it's just like, ugh, come on guys, like, can we not? But they will. So when they're going to reach for a toy, I like to have the soundness of mind that it is not completely disgusting. I like to wash my kids' toys at least once a week. Um, well, I don't say at least. I say at most once a week. <laughs> Unless they are sick and then I do wash them a lot more frequently. Once a week, I take all of the toys that are in rotation at that time and I wash them. I separate them out into soft toys, wood toys, hard plastic toys, and toys with batteries, and I wash them all differently. I have a whole article with step-by-step how-tos that you can check out. I will link it down below. 
and I explain to you the cleaners that I use and how I do all of this, but what you need to know is that it only takes me one day to do all of the toys. So usually I do it during a nap session and the bulk of it is done. Honestly, if you can't wash all of your toys in one day, I recommend doing a toy rotation. I don't believe in having a ton of toys out for kids at a time. That's not to say that they can't have manipulatives, but I just don't want the playroom to ever feel overwhelming. And if I can't wash all the toys in one day, especially with my methods of like giant batch washing them, um, that's too many toys in their playroom. <laughs> so I often will talk to the nanny family about putting them in rotation in the garage or maybe donating some that they don't play with at all or something like that, come up with a system so that the toys don't become overwhelming for the kids and, or me who's cleaning them. Um, but cleaning them is super easy. I also, in the article that I'll link below of how to clean them, there is a recipe for a two-part cleaner many of you probably use and love. And then there's also a DIY laundry soap um, that I like to make if they're not using a baby laundry detergent just because it's safe for the kids to then stick those toys back in their mouth. The fifth skill is one that many parents don't think they need in a nanny, but then when their kid turns two, they wish that their nanny knew how to handle it, which is potty training. Potty training is one of those skills that takes a while to figure out a rhythm with. There are so many methods online that it can honestly be quite overwhelming and feel like daunting. And then you see all of these things about regression and like, it could be a lot. But first of all, make sure your kid is ready to start potty training. If they're not ready, your potty training efforts are going to fail no matter how awesome you are because it will just be harder to train them because they're not ready. Like whether they don't want to or they don't understand, like they just, you need to make sure that your kid is ready. Some telltale signs that they might soon be ready to start potty training is hiding to poop in their diaper, following you into the bathroom, asking questions about the toilet, feeling uncomfortable or immediately grabbing you when they've peed in their diaper. Those are signs that they don't want a diaper anymore <laughs> or that they're feeling the embarrassment of going to the bathroom and then want to go into the bathroom to do that, if you know what I mean. So those are some telltale signs there. Make sure that they're ready. Then once you've done that, I have an article on how to potty train. Hello, this video is full of other articles and it's because it is a lot to cover, but I have an article all about potty training. It talks about all of the methods that I've used that I've had success with and then how to implement those methods. So you can head over there and check those out. Once you and the family have agreed on the potty training method, go for it. It is going to take patience and routine and consistency, which are three words that I used earlier in the video and it's because you use that pretty much anytime you're teaching a kid anything. But with potty training, there are four things that I ask that you remember because kids are little and are still learning. Like anything with kids, be consistent because potty training takes longer than you would think. Accidents will happen. Don't shame your kids for having accidents. That's not fair because they're still learning. And remember that it's okay to try a different method if the first one you're using isn't working out very well. It doesn't make you or your kid a failure by any means, it just means that maybe they have a different way of learning. And like I mentioned earlier, potty training only works if they're ready, so don't rush your kids. Okay? Cool. Skill number five, how to use a baby bottle. Now, I don't usually recommend that as a first time nanny, you start with babies because they can't communicate their needs and often require a bit more finesse than a kid that can communicate their needs. But if you are at the point where you've decided to start nannying babies, super cool, um, you will need to know how to use warm and clean a baby bottle. So to start first things first, remember that as a nanny, you are there to support the nanny family you're working with. That means no judgment on their choice of using formula or breast milk. Whatever they've decided is what's working and is best for them and their needs. It is not our place as nannies to judge mothers or families for their use of breast milk or formula. If they have decided to use breast milk though, I recommend printing out and putting on the fridge the storage table that I have made. It's a cute little graphic that basically tells you the times and temperatures that breast milk is good for. 
depending on where it's stored and how you're using it. Anyways, to warm either formula or breast milk, I recommend using a bottle warmer because it gets it at the right temperature, it's super easy to use, very convenient, um, and then you can multitask, especially if you have a baby and a toddler. I also recommend that if you're using breast milk, pull out whatever supply you're going to use, if it's not already done, for the day from the freezer and put it in the fridge. That way it can do a slow thaw and then it'll be even faster to warm up in the bottle warmer later. To clean baby bottles, I have, yes, you guessed it, a link down below <laughs> because I give step-by-step -step instructions with pictures of how to clean a baby bottle. It's super important because there are a lot of little pieces of a baby bottle that need to be cleaned well. I also, in the article where there's the pictures with the how to clean the baby bottles, I have links to the brush and the tray that I use that I really like. And so if I'm working with a family that is pregnant and doesn't already have baby supplies, I often recommend that they put these on their registry. So they're linked there for you as well. Or you can always, if you have the privilege of having a dishwasher in the house that you're working in, can put them straight into the dishwasher. Most baby bottles can be washed in the dishwasher with a cute little baby bottle basket, pop a picture up, <laughs> that has space for all of the pieces so they don't get dropped down into the bottom of the dishwasher. You can just dishwash them. But make sure if you are gonna put them in the dishwasher to rinse them right after use because you just don't want bacteria just like growing in there for funsies, you know? Tip number six is a pretty common one, not 10, six six pretty common one doing baby laundry if you have especially if you have more than one kid um you can guarantee that you will be doing kids laundry <laughs> at some point in your nanny career so a few quick tips on that do your baby laundry separate from the rest of the family's laundry tiny little clothes need their own space to get rubbed in the agitator of the washer and also to get completely soapy and sudsy because we all know that babies ooze from literally every orifice of their body. Ugh, and it stains their clothes. <laughs> I have a stain remover that I use for white onesies, hydrogen peroxide and baking soda. You make a little paste, you rub it on there, boom, the yellow comes out of your white onesies. Also, I use Dreft stain removal, OxyClean stain removal, and I usually use Dreft laundry detergent, the baby's Dreft laundry detergent, or I will use a homemade laundry detergent that I used for myself, um, which is super great because it's for very sensitive skin. Hello, that's me. Um, so I've used any of those to do baby laundry. Another quick pro tip is to put all of the baby socks in a lingerie mesh bag zip it up. That way you don't lose any baby socks. Going from a, a good nanny to a super awesome, we love her and want to keep her forever nanny, you can also offer to do the family's laundry. Personally, I love doing laundry. It's one of my favorite chores to do. I don't know why, but I do. I really do enjoy it. I find it very soothing to do laundry. So I always offer to do the whole family's laundry. That includes bed linens like once a week that I'm willing to do. Um, and I find that it always just like adds a level up, you know, on my nanny life. Um, but as usual, I only recommend that you offer services that you actually enjoy doing. So if you really like cooking, offer meal prep. If you really like cleaning, offer to sweep or mop. If you really like doing laundry, offer to do laundry. Only do the stuff that you actually enjoy doing because you don't want to burn out or regret offering that service later. Only do what you like as far as it goes, uh, as far as extra services go. So apparently I can't count and I will have fixed that when I'm editing this video, but that was number seven. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching. As always, I produce new videos Tuesdays and Saturdays for more nanny tips, advice, hacks, whatever you wanna call them. Basically, how to be a better nanny. One of the, the core qualities of being a better nanny is to continue to learn and know that you don't know what you don't know. There's always gonna be more for you to learn. So keep learning and keep growing and keep up to date on these videos by subscribing and hitting the notification bell so that you too can be a great nanny. Um, find me at OSSimbly on Instagram to see when I drop latest podcast episode or YouTube video or just give you life updates because I do that sometimes too over there. If you have any questions about anything that we covered in today's video, feel free to comment down below and I will see you next time. Bye!